I thought they were disgraceful. I checked very carefully that there was not one word of gratitude mm. throughout three hours. Nothing. Emma, uh, Meghan would be nothing if she hadn't married a prince and been looked after and encouraged by the royal family. And yet she takes that so much for granted that mm. she couldn't even add that word in. Yeah. She wants to kill it all off, absolutely crush it to pieces. And I think we've got to have a big fight back to protect our royal family and our own kingdom, you know. I mean, it's just beyond words, really. Mm. And Harry, when he actually showed um, a, a glimpse of being not very pleased with her, because most of it he was looking at her adoringly, that's OK, but when she did that phony curtsy oh, yes. and then with a squeaky voice said, I'm so pleased to see you, Your Majesty, you know, um, and he looked horrified, but he didn't have the guts to say something about it, even on air. He could have done it quite nicely and said, you know, leave my But grandmother. you saw his jaw sort of clench... His, his, his jaw sort of clenched and then he swallowed. Went, yeah. mm -hmm. And it showed actually how much he's under her spell and under her control, that he doesn't actually dare say something about that. His grandmother, who he loved so much, who he flew over to see that she was being looked after properly, um, none of that came through. He just accepted it because what Megan says... Megan's always right. You well, mustn't well, criticise her. But you know what, though? I also think, though, that he is culpable too because he is not doing himself any favours either. Whilst I know he's under a spell and all that, the two of them together, I think, are quite a toxic combination. And I, yes. I, won't, all, I won't all throw it back to her because I know... He should be doing a lot more. If he really thought that was disrespectful, he should have put her in the place. Yes, I'm not um, excusing him. I'm just saying that I thought that was the only time where he looked as if he didn't approve, but he still didn't have the guts to do it. No, he's a completely different man from the one I knew when I was writing his biography. There's almost nothing that you can see is similar. And I think, in a way, he's very frightened, because Meghan once has said that Diana's inside her. And I think because Meghan he believed... Said Meghan said that. Because, she, because he believed that his mother is still looking down on him, that um, if he didn't go along with her, he might offend her. I think it's of an extraordinary feeling, but that, to me, means that it is, it's where she's got the grip, that if he feels that he would upset his mother, then he will stay with her and go along with her. And it's tragedy, tragic, absolutely but, but tragic. I, but he doesn't think it's tragic. He, he looks like he's in, in the lap of love in the best place ever. And, and he, he, no. they are the thieves on this one together. I don't think they can even see how disrespectful they are. Because from my view, watching that, it felt like they believed that this was all down to her race and that's why people were treating her a certain way. And, listen, if you blindfolded me, I never saw what she looked like and I, I heard how she was behaving... I would still come up with the same conclusion. It's got nothing to do with the way she looks. No, it hasn't got anything to do with the way she looks because, actually, they use that if you disagree with them or criticise them in any, at any level, then you are a racist, which is not actually the correct um, explanation of what a racist is. So, I mean, I think she's included that in her brain, that you can't actually criticise or doubt them or say anything about them because they jump on it. I think she's found a very good sales point and this is how she captures so many people following her because they feel sorry that she is suffering from racism. But actually, you have to be one step aware and, and she's, she's, we're not at all um, racist, but we just don't like her or how she behaves. Let's feel sorry for multi-millionaire privileged princess Meghan. <laughs> I don't think so. Angela, we need to move on. Let's get on to something else. Camilla, she's amazing, really, isn't she? I know yes. she had a rocky road at the beginning, but she did prove herself. You know, she went through all of that. And it was on the same day, wasn't it, that this particular yes. event happened? Yes, it, it was a shame because it got almost no publicity, but it is one of her top priorities. And every year since 2006, she makes a party for children who probably won't see the following year. They're all extremely ill and the parents come along and she does this party and she um, serves the food, she serves the drink, she sits on the floor and chats to them. And she does... This year there's a Father Christmas who's come along and she gets... Um, 
animals to come along and to stroke them and reindeer um, and the kids uh, just love it and she feels that's when Christmas belongs to her and it's a tremendously good thing because the families are so um, unhappy and stressed but to come to um, see the Queen or then before the, the um, Duchess um, and have all those things and there's loads for them to eat and they have sausages and mashed potato and sometimes the name's done in the mashed potato. It's a really brilliant thing and it's very happy and there's a grenadier guard there who has a big hat and a sword and he, all the children are allowed to try the hat Aww. on which they roar with laughter and the sword is used to put each light and um, decoration on the Christmas tree, huge Christmas tree. And the children are there with their mouths open and of course, looking this at this. All overshadowed because it was this is all completely day. overshadowed. So I'm pleased to talk it's about it because it happens every year apart from the COVID year when it was done remotely. But it's a very, very kind, thoughtful and warm thing to do.